Good morning. <laughs> it's early. Second cup of coffee. Lucy and I just got back from our morning walk. It's kind of overcast and misty out there. It's just lovely. My next task is to go out and check the vegetable garden to see how the babies are growing. You can see how much better the raised bed garden area is looking with this mulch down. This is really going to help improve the soil underneath this mulch because I laid that cardboard down first. And here's what happens to soil when you do that. Worms actually love cardboard. So they're going to come up from the ground and start munching on that cardboard, leaving worm castings, which is just a fancy name for worm poop. <laughs> which is really good for the soil and it's really going to improve the quality of the soil underneath this cardboard. So if at any time I want to remove this mulch to maybe plant this area or something else might happen here, you know, once the owner has the property back, then the soil is much improved and we have a much better starting point to grow something or do something different with this area. One task I still have yet to do is address this chain link fence that goes into the backyard. Now this is what faces the street and what I see when I pull up. Clearly, <laughs> not putting my best foot forward, but I do have a solution. I picked up this strapping from Lowe's and what this does is that goes into the chain link and actually creates a privacy fence so that when you are walking by or you drive up, you're no longer going to see into the backyard and won't be seeing those trash cans and all that cardboard that I, I swear, I go to bed with no cardboard, I wake up, there's cardboard. So that's going to be my next project here in this area is to install that so we have a cleaner look with this fence area. I have gone ahead and planted all the fabric raised bed pots and everything is looking so very good. I wanted to check this morning because we have had rain in the last few days and I wanted to see how everything was faring. These are my radishes and as you can see I planted half the pot because radishes are really really quick. So once these get a little bit bigger I'm going to go ahead and plant the other half then I'm going to harvest this half plant that again and back and forth until we get frost and I just can't plant any more, at least the radishes for this season. Here we have beets. I planted fairly heavy with the beets. I'm going to go ahead and thin probably, oh, four or five days. So I'll have a nice beet harvest. My basil is looking lovely. I actually have big plans for that in a salad later this week. This is my kale. I love the mineral rich leafy greens so I've actually planted a lot of them and will succession sow until I get to a point where it's just going to be too late into the fall season to be able to harvest them. I did plant some bush beans. Actually I think I planted three or four seeds in here but only one came up. So I came out yesterday and planted, actually I planted two seeds per hole. I planted three more holes. I'm anxious to see if it was the seeds that just weren't germinating well or if I didn't plant them correctly. Anyway, I have plenty of time to harvest them, so I'm looking forward to seeing if I can get the additional plants to grow in this pot. This is one of the cherry tomatoes that I'm hoping I'm going to get fruit on before the frost. I have double caged it. So one cage is upside down, so the top is sitting at the base of that plant, and then the second cage is up here. Cherry tomatoes can get fairly bushy, so double caging them is just a really good way to have an affordable way to stake that tomato. Look at my zucchini. <laughs> I have actually fairly high hopes for my zucchini because it's really past the pest pressure season. So if I have enough time, enough sunlight, and if I keep it nice and watered, I think I should be able to harvest some squash off of this one. This is my other cherry tomato, of course, double caged. Down here is my mint plant, bless its little heart. It's being so patient with me. I need to repot him and put him in his own little place. I do have a pot, I just haven't gotten around to it. 
Over here we have chard, more of those deep mineral rich greens, love them. I love to saute vegetables, particularly with a really dark leafy green and put it over rice with a little Parmesan cheese. Oh, so delicious. And here we have my cucumbers. And the reason the cucumber is down here closer to this fence is because I want to train it to go up that chain link fence. Good morning. I have no idea what I look like, <laughs> but I just wanted to show you guys what I'm doing this morning. It's actually pretty cool out here today. Gosh, it was like 68 when I woke up, which is unheard of in South Carolina in my area in August. And I think right now it's probably in the low 70s and there's a little bit of a cloud cover. So it's really a nice time to be outside. What I'm doing this morning is working on the grass, the yard. There are patchy areas and I want to address those and I'm going to be doing a few things. There's a big truck going by. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that or not down the street. What I'm going to be doing is in the bald patches on the lawn, I'm going to be inserting these little sod squares. So I'm going around digging a very shallow little hole and then I just pop these sod squares in those little holes and it will run and fill out that area of the lawn. The next thing is, here, let me show you. As you can see, that pile <laughs> right there looks like sand. It's actually top dressing for the lawn. This is gonna help the lawn really grow, give it a lot of nutrients, give it what it needs to really take off. So once I have all these little sod pods into the yard itself, the lawn, I'm going to shovel that into a wheelbarrow and then rake it around the lawn. I'll probably show you guys, maybe not. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> and then I'm going to add a really nice, nutritious fertilizer on top of that, and then I'm gonna water the heck out of it. So this is what I'm doing today. What are you doing? <laughs> Make sure you put it down in the comments below. Remember that big old pile of mulch that was right there yesterday? <laughs> I shoveled that whole thing and moved it into the backyard. And what I'll do is as the mulch kind of settles in over the winter and I get some low spots, I'll go ahead and just bring some of that leftover mulch from the backyard and fill in the front yard areas. So a handy little way to keep the planter beds looking really beautiful throughout the winter. I just wanna make a note <laughs> that just in case you think that I knew how to address the lawn this way. I did not. I don't know anything about growing a lawn. In California, they grow automatically. Here, it's a little bit more challenging. No, Ryan from Grassroots Gardening, he has a channel here on YouTube and also he has a beautiful nursery. It's Grassroots Yard Supply. I think, that it, I think that's what it is, but it's Grassroots. It's out in Graniteville. He was the one that came up with this plan for the lawn. I actually got the grass pods from him out of his nursery. And it was really great because they were on clearance because it's the end of the season. So he was the one that put this plan together. I'm the one doing the labor. So he's definitely the brains in this operation. I am hot and sweaty. I have no idea how I look, but I just found out the coolest thing. I have gone ahead and inserted all the little sod pods and I have distributed the top dressing all over the lawn, you know, wheelbarrowed it with the shovel and raked it in and that sort of thing. Now I need to feed it with this nitrogen feeder right here. And I thought, you know, I don't know how I'm gonna do it because it's kind of tiny, tiny little granules. And I thought, well, I can just cast it 
with my finger and then I came up with this idea. I went and got my strainer from the kitchen. This works so good. I am not kidding you. I can't imagine anything that would work better than this. So you're not going to be able to see it kind of coming out of the strainer, but watch what I do. It's like the coolest thing. It is absolutely distributing <laughs> this fertilizer so even and so easily. Sometimes in life you just got to be creative. Lucy and I just got back from our evening walk and we were walking along in the neighborhood and a lady on a bicycle went by and she stopped and she wanted to pet Lucy and we talked about her little corgi. It was just really fun. And she said, you know, I'm on my way downtown to Flanagan's to get ice cream. Now this lady was probably in her early 70s and she rides her bike downtown every Sunday night to get ice cream. She always gets butter pecan. <laughs> You know, there's just something about that. I just really loved that. Plus, it made me want ice cream. Let's talk about water. Water is one of my favorite topics and it is much more intricate and deep and rich than most of us actually think about. You know, water is such a natural part of our lives. I don't know if we really realize what water is, where it comes from, how we're supposed to drink it, what it does for our body, that sort of thing. I drink a ton of water, as I'm sure you do, because we all know that drinking water is really important for our health. But what I have found out over the years is that there is a huge difference in water. <laughs> There's water that you really want to drink that's good for your body and water that's not so much. It's just going to quench your thirst, but it's not really going to give your body the nutrients you need. So let's talk about water and how we're supposed to drink water. Natural spring water happens in nature, clearly. It bubbles up through and over rocks, collecting minerals and other ingredients that are important to our health along the way. So these trace minerals, which include things like sodium, calcium, magnesium, potassium, those are all things that our body really needs. In addition, that water is structured. In other words, the water is in the form that it was meant to be. When I say that, what I'm saying is that there's a huge difference in the structure of water. Water as it's supposed to be consumed has a structure to it. And that structure is that the molecules are all in formation. And that formation helps our body intake that water and use it to its fullest throughout our body. When water is unstructured or chaotic, it means that it's all messed up. <laughs> And I know that sounds funny, but there really is a difference in the structure of water. And the Japanese scientist Emoto showed us that. You can look him up online, you can look up his research, and I'll have a few links listed down below that are going to talk about the importance of structured water. The problem with so much of the water available to us now is that it's in a chaotic state. It's no longer structured. Now, how does this chaos happen? Let me give you an analogy, and I call it the 3,000 mile Caesar salad. So there are farms in Salinas, California, right on the coast that grow romaine lettuce. There are restaurants in Chicago that want to serve a Caesar salad. So what do they do? They buy the romaine from the farm on the coast and fly it or truck it or train it 3,000 miles to Chicago to make that salad. I think that's ridiculous. Now what happens to that head of lettuce on that journey is that it loses a lot of its nutritional benefits. First of all, it's a long way from where it was picked. It's been stored, it's been shipped, it's been shoved around, thrown around, and by the time it ends up on the plate and that restaurant in Chicago, it's a very different thing than it was when it was freshly picked in Salinas, which is why we all need our own garden so that we have the freshest produce available to us that are rich in the nutrients, minerals, and vitamins that our body needs. Well, the same thing happens with water. Water gets messed up 
in our system because it goes through so many unnatural processes. First of all, the right angles in the plumbing that get the water to your house are really destructive to the structure of water. It creates a chaos when that water hits that right angle, it disorganizes. And when you think of all the right angles that it has to go through to get to your kitchen and out your faucet, it's an equivalent to that 3,000 mile Caesar salad. It's a mess compared to what it was when it bubbled up from the earth. It was intended for us to drink fresh spring water. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't have a spring in my neighborhood. At least I haven't found one. So I have to take care of myself in a way that's going to get me water that is actually going to be well absorbed and well used by my body. The very first thing I do is I order spring water delivered to my house. Now, what is spring water? Spring water is actually collected at the location where that water bubbles up from deep underground. It contains the trace minerals and all the other goodies that our body needs that were intended for us to drink in our water. The water bottles that we get in the store, most of that is not spring water. It is treated water. It's been shoved into plastic. It maybe has gotten hot along the way and the short short story is is that water is a mess. It's no longer structured and it's no longer in a form where your body can really take it in and absorb it very effectively and very efficiently. I get spring water delivered. Now I had a great company when I lived at the lake. It's called Blue Dot Water. If you're in that area, it's excellent water. The water here, I had very few choices, so I just went with kind of a name brand. They deliver the jugs to my house every two weeks, and that's what I use as the foundation for my water. Now, how do I make sure that that water is structured? In other words, that water is in a format that my body can really use. What I use is my Analima. This is not sponsored. My Lima. they don't even know I'm doing this video, but I did want you guys to know about this in case structured water is something you've been looking for. And let me tell you this, although structured water is probably more of an obscure topic at this point in time, I'll bet you within another 12, 24, 36 months at the most, Everyone's gonna be talking about structured water because that's how powerful it is. Here's how this works. And we're gonna go back to frequency. And you guys know I've talked about frequency on my channel a lot because everything is frequency. We are all energy. We're just vibrating at a different rate. And each of us and everything on the planet this plant, my dog, this shirt, me, we all have our own unique energy signature. It's like a fingerprint. It's very, very unique to us. And my energy signature is going to be very different than Lucy's energy signature or Dex's. It is an extremely unique energy field that I'm in right now and that you're in right now. That energy frequency is what we're talking about with water. Water is another frequency. How do we get the frequency and the structure of this water back to its natural state or an organized structured state that makes it really, really healthful? And when I say healthful, I really mean it. There is a lot of great health benefits that come from drinking structured water. This Analima is what I use to get my water back to a purely structured state. Now, how does it do that? It's very complicated and I actually did an interview with the inventor of the Analima. Brilliant, brilliant man. And I will have a couple of videos of his listed down below. He is really, really worth listening to. And when I talked to him about this, I was so very impressed with the technology and with his research into this incredibly useful device. The water is a certain intelligence in it. There is no biological system that can work without water at this moment of time. And the quality of water is one of the most critical ones. And if we are going to pollute this water, then it will have an effect upon the entire world. The findings that we did over the last 40 years show that water is much more than H2O. It responds to certain frequencies and it can keep those frequencies into its molecular structure. And that is so profound 
and that is so important that we noticed already that the microbiome is improving dramatically. They think, yeah, so what? Without that, there is no food. If you kill that, and we were fantastic as human beings killing that in a dramatic way all over the world. If you kill that, then it has a huge effect upon the crop cycle and on a food cycle. And not only that on the food, but also on the quality of the food. We forget that the food must have a certain quality as well. And that is what we have seen is improved in a dramatic way if you bring in the right water. And we were able to bring back that microbiome much faster, much, much faster than normal water does. But the same is for human beings and for animals. We see the same effect over there as well. If you start to drink the right water, then also your internal system is responding in a much better way. The amelima comes in this metal case right here. And you know what? I'm thinking they might have a different type of case now. I've had mine for a while. And when I looked on the website, it had a wooden case. I'm not sure if that's an option or if it only comes in a wooden case now, mine is metal. This right here is crystal glass. It is very, very sturdy and it's very important to the longevity of the analema. What's inside of here is incredibly structured water. So this water has a specific energy field that is vibrating at a certain frequency. What happens when you place this into your jar of water, and this is how I keep my water, is that the frequency of that water inside the analema is going to impact and structure the water in this glass. Now, why does that do that? Because in nature, nature is always seeking a higher vibration. And the water in this vial is higher and more structured than the water in my jar right here. So by placing this in the water, and I always swirl it around for about 15 seconds, so I'll just put it in and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's it, I'm done. So then I take my analema and I put it right back in the case. It twists on and then I keep this over by my coffee pot because it's easy for me then to structure the water that I'm going to use for my coffee. It's right near the refrigerator where I'm going to place my jars of water. And then this is what I drink. So I keep my water bottles all cuddled up in the refrigerator because that vibrational field from that structured water, they're going to support each other in that area. And this is the water that I drink. If you are interested in really impacting your health, and I mean it, when I was talking to Dolph, the inventor of this, he stopped and he looked me right in the eye and he said, what you're holding in your hand is an amazing piece of technology. And I believed him. He is very, very learned and very, very clear on how the body works and how water works within the body. By keeping our body hydrated with structured water, we're going to be healthier, feel healthier, live longer, live more vibrant lives. Really, the health benefits are tremendous. Now, how do you care for this? You don't. It's pretty much super easy. I will rinse mine off from time to time, and then every couple of weeks, I will take it out of the case and set it outside in bright sunlight for about 10 to 15 minutes. What does that do? It just sort of tops off the charge of this structured water. I love this thing. I actually try to always remember to take it with me when I'm going to be eating at a restaurant so that I can structure the water that I'm going to have with my meal. I always drink water. <laughs> it's nice to have the convenience of this to be able to throw it in my purse and have structured water anytime I want. So the analema for me has been a real game changer as far as my health goes. All the water that I drink at home, and I use these little canning jars to drink out of, I'll just grab one out, it's icy cold, it's structured, it's super hydrating, it's incredibly healthful, and I feel really good about the water that I get to drink. I understand that this technology or this whole concept is a little bit new to a lot of people. I will have some very educational, fact-filled, science-based 
videos listed down below. If you're curious about it, you can do some research on your own. I think you're going to be impressed with the concept of structured water. After all, <laughs> this is the type of water we were created to drink. And that beautiful structured spring water is how we were to hydrate our bodies. Things have changed, maybe not for the better in a lot of arenas, but we can get back to healthful water with the analema. We have furniture drama. Actually, I think it's more like furniture intrigue. You know, I have stated in past videos that my relationship with online furniture shopping has been sketchy at best, particularly when it comes to Overstock and Wayfair. It's not that I've had, well, yeah, actually I have had a pretty disappointing experience with both of them. Now, when it's something like a table or a non-upholstered item, it's been okay just okay. But the upholstered items across the board have just been a disappointment for me. I know a lot of you love shopping those sites. I support you in that. My experience has been mediocre at best and that's probably giving it more credit. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I finally put my foot down and I decided I am just not gonna order from Overstock or Wayfair ever again. And of course, we all know what comes next. I place an order on Wayfair. I was weak. I was in a weakened state. It was late at night. <laughs> they have PayPal. It was quick. There were a couple of areas in my home, my rental home here, that I couldn't find pieces for. And I found them, at least it looked like it, on the Wayfair website, so I went ahead and placed an order. Now here's where things get a little bit interesting because it didn't turn out terrible, it turned out interesting. The first thing I wanna talk about is this nightstand. You can see this nightstand, it's just a dark brown. This is not, I, this is faux wood, you know, it's wannabe wood with metal legs right here. It's not a big statement piece. It is a nightstand that I needed for my bedroom and I wanted some Something round and fairly small, actually something just like this. So I was looking at this on the Wayfair website, trying to decide if I was going to pull the trigger and buy from them again. The price was $69. And I thought, you know, okay, $69, I have to put it together. It looks like it'll fit perfect. And then I looked again on the website page and it said open box price $14. And I went, what? <laughs> $14? So I pulled the trigger right away. Free shipping, $14. And this is what came. I really did read the fine print and it said, you know, our inspectors go through and make sure all the parts and pieces are there. Well, you know what? They can say anything. They could say blessed by the Dalai Lama. How would we know? They may or may not do all of that. And I thought, well, I'm taking a bit of a risk with my $14, but it might be worth it. And you know what? It really was. So the reason I wanted to tell you guys about this is if you're shopping on one of those sites and you see an open box price, you might want to check it out because $14 for this, quite the bargain. So I'm happy with this particular piece. Let's move on to the other thing I ordered. The other item I ordered is this chair. I have been looking for the perfect chair for this place in my living room since my sofa got delivered. I wanted something of a particular size, a particular shape, because this area that it's sitting in is specific. When this chair arrived, it was another one of those, oh no. On the website, it talks about faux leather chair. And here, let me take the pillow off so you guys can actually see it. Now my guess is, is that on the video, this chair is looking much more like leather than it actually looks in person. In person, <laughs> It looks like Naga hide. We all remember Naga hide, right? I know Naga hide because my dad, bless his heart, had a succession of about nine different Naga hide Barco loungers in his lifetime. I'm so familiar with Naga hide. Here's the story with this chair. Let me tell you what I love about it. First of all, I love the shape, the scale. I love the legs on it. I love the design. There's so much about this chair that is actually very perfect for this area that I want to place it in. So we've got a lot going for us with this chair. The problem I have with this chair is the upholstery. Honestly, if you were here in my living room, you'd look at me and go, ooh, <laughs> this is kind of tragic. And it really is. 
And in my opinion, it really is kind of tragic. It doesn't look like faux leather to me. It looks like fake leather to me. It looks like Naga hide. I mean, <laughs> I don't know anybody who would look at this chair and think this is leather. It's just, it just doesn't look that good. So I've spent quite a bit of time thinking about what am I going to do with this chair? Am I going to return it? Am I going to donate it? What am I going to do? There are things I love about this chair. I just don't like this finish. Well, I did some research and I made a decision. I am going to paint this chair. I know that sounds wild. You're going to paint a brand new chair. Yes, I am. I've actually watched a number of YouTube videos. You can find anything on YouTube. We all know that. And there is a paint out there called Dixie Belle paint that really works well for faux fabric like this. I've watched a number of videos. Everyone that has done the process says it's amazing how well this paint stays on. It doesn't crack. It stretches with the material. It looks fabulous. So I have gone ahead and ordered a couple of paint samples, actually three paint samples, and I'm going to test them on the underneath of this chair. What I think painting this chair, and I'm going for a more cream or off-white or light taupe color. <laughs> Lucy is right here. She is just dying to just sit on my lap and lick me. That's really what she wants to do. Hi, sweetheart. Say hello. Hello. Anyway, I am going to paint this an off-white cream taupe, something along those lines. And I think what it's going to do is it's going to take this chair from something tragic to something really, really cool. And the reason I think it's going to be really, really cool, hi sweetheart, is the shape. It's really ha it really has a cool shape. It has a cool profile. It's just the right scale. Everything works in this space in my living room except the finish of the fabric. So the paint samples are on their way and I'm going to paint the chair and we're gonna see how it turns out. I think it's gonna be fabulous. It may be a disaster. We don't know yet, but that'll be coming soon. I have a pot of purple hull peas on the stove. <laughs> I first had these two weeks ago and now that's all I want to eat. So I'm cooking up a pot of peas. I'm actually cooking them today and I'm going to have them in the refrigerator overnight and then heat them up tomorrow, a serving. There's probably three servings in this pot because I think they're probably going to just, you know, taste better because they've sat overnight. But look, I have purple whole peas in the freezer so I can have it, you know, in a couple months. I'm so excited. I don't know what I'm going to do when I eat the last batch of purple whole peas. I'm really going to miss them. They are so delicious. As you can see, I have some work done on the sky area. I don't like it. <laughs> Just in case you think this process always goes smoothly, it doesn't. The reason I don't like it is that it's just too literal. And that is a problem I have a lot when I'm painting is that instead of painting an impression of what it is I want to communicate, I paint the thing. And right now these look like clouds. <laughs> and I want it to look more just moody and have a sense of clouds instead of looking light clouds. I hope that makes some sense. So I'm going to have to go back, probably put over a layer of deep dark gray blue color, just a transparent layer, and then work on it again. So wish me luck that I can stop painting the thing and start painting the feeling.
It's time for me to come clean. This is the ugly reality <laughs> that I've been hiding. Look at this, you guys. It goes on for days and days and days. Hi. <laughs> and days. But I have an excuse, don't we always? <laughs> There's always an excuse for bad behavior. So here's what happened. I moved in here and I knew that the first bedroom was going to be my filming studio. The second bedroom was going to be the room I was going to use to sleep in as a bedroom. In this third bedroom, this is going to be my Zen Den, a la my friend Jen. She has this awesome Zen Den in her home here in Aiken. And I thought, I want to do that. It just feels so good in that room. I knew that I wanted to get the rest of the house done before this. This was going to be kind of my last little treat to myself. So I decided that I would use this as kind of the staging area. And what I mean by that is I would put everything that I wasn't putting away or using in some other area of the house in here. And of course, it is turned into one gigantic junk drawer. I mean, it's a mess. When I get shipments of products that I don't have time to open, it goes in here. When I get something I don't know what to do with, it goes in here. It has turned into an absolute disaster. Hi, Lucy. And today, I'm going to fix it. You know what? You write in the middle of things, not working for me. Not working for me. Go get a hobby besides me. Here's a funny thing that I want to talk to you guys and it's about energy and enthusiasm for a project. I was actually with my friend Jen. We were having lunch a few days ago and I said to her, I am finally getting extremely frustrated with that messy room in my house. And what I was recognizing is that that frustration was going to lead to the energy that was going to get me to clean it. Let me explain what I mean by that. When I am thinking about what I'm going to do for the day, I choose the activity that sounds the most exciting, the most fulfilling, the one that I just can't wait to dive into. Well, cleaning this room has not been at the top of my list. As a matter of fact, when I would think about this room, all it would do is make me tired and unmotivated. Lucy? Uh-uh. She was getting into the cat litter. However, that frustration, I knew that that frustration was going to transform into the energy I needed to be enthusiastic and energetic about getting this room cleaned out. And you know what? It only took about two or three days for that frustration with the room to put me in a place where I literally cannot wait to clean this room up. <laughs> So that's what I'm going to be working on today. What I suspect is because my energy is in the place now where I really, really want to clean this room, I imagine that it's going to take far less time than I anticipated it would when I was thinking about it when it sounded awful and I was unmotivated and it just was a real drag on my energy. So I'm curious to see how long it's going to take me to clean this room. My goal is to pretty much get it all in shape today, if not everything cleaned out, at least it be in a more organized state because I want to fly my daughter out here in October and October is literally right around the corner and this is going to double as my guest room. So I need to get this all cute and fluffed up for my daughter's visit. It's gonna come pretty quickly. And that is one of the exciting things that's really motivating me to get this done. So off I go, wish me luck. It's the next day. <laughs> you know those projects that you dread 
and you put them off and put them off and put them off and then it ends up taking you like one fifth of the amount of time that you thought it would. This was not one of those. I was up so late last night finishing up this project. Part of it was that there was just so much random stuff in this room. And then the other part was I have to put all this stuff away into the other room. So what I cleaned up in this room created a new organizational task in every single room at my house. So I have just a couple of more spaces in the house to organize and put away the stuff that I moved out of here. But this room is now completely clean. The only thing in the back are just some decor items and organizational stuff that I will end up integrating into this room or just getting rid of. So <laughs> glad this is done. The sense of relief is absolutely huge. It really is. I feel so much more at peace. And the other thing I want to say is I'm really glad that I waited until my energy was in a place where it felt like it was an interesting challenge and a task that I wanted to take on. Because if I had done this when I wasn't in the mood, oh my gosh, it would have been such an ugly journey. And we all know you can have a happy ending to a miserable journey. You know I've been thinking about ice cream since the bicycle lady a few nights ago, right? <laughs> well, tonight, that's on the dinner menu. This is Flanagan's. You can see the little sign right up here. This is our local ice cream shop. It took me about four minutes to drive here from my place. If I were to walk, it'd be about 20 minutes. I probably would have walked if it wasn't so hot. I'm sure I'll walk when the weather's cooler, although I don't have ice cream that often. But gosh, since I talked to the ice cream lady, <laughs> who was bicycling the other night. I've been thinking about it nonstop. I have a wish for the world and I've thought a lot about this and I think that if this one thing came true it would solve so many of the problems that we see around us and that that dream of mine is I wish for every human on the planet every human from the tiniest island to the busiest metropolis woke up each morning excited excited for their day loving their life looking forward to what they were doing can you imagine if every single person woke up excited what a difference that would be in the world it would solve all our customer service problems everything would get done so beautifully because everyone would love what they were doing it would transform our experience and our existence Products would be manufactured just with exquisite detail because the person creating it would have a passion for doing that. Customer service would be brilliant because everyone in that position would love helping. Everything would just be magical if everyone loved their life, was excited for what they were doing, and just couldn't wait to start the day. So that's, <laughs> that's my wish for the world. Thank you for coming to my mini TED Talk. I appreciate it. I want to thank you so much for spending time with me. You know, it just tickles me when you take a few minutes out of your day to spend it with me. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. Again, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything makeup, skincare, and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. Make it a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.